प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर डिक्टेशन ऑफ एच लेसन टाइटल्ड चैलेंजेस ऑफ नेशन अंडर चैप्टर वन ऑफ पॉलिटिकल साइंस बुक ऑफ एन सी आर टी क्लास ट्वेल्व फाइव सेकेंड्स एट द आर ऑफ मिड नाइट ऑन फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन इंडिया अटेंड इंडिपेंडेंस जवाहरलाल नेहरू the first prime minister of free india addressed a special session of the constituent assembly that night this was the famous trust with destiny speech that you are familiar with this was the moment indians had been waiting for you have read in your history books that there were many voices in our national movement but there were two goals almost everyone agreed upon one that after independence we shall run our country through democratic government and two that the government will be run for the good of all particularly the poor and the socially disadvantaged groups now that the country was independent the time had come to realize the promise of freedom this was not going to be easy india was born in very difficult circumstances perhaps no other country by then was born in a situation more difficult than that of india in 1947 freedom came with the partition of the country the year 1947 was a year of unprecedented violence and trauma of displacement it was in this situation that independent india started on its journey to achieve several objectives yet the turmoil that accompanied independence did not make our readers leaders lose sight of the multiple challenges that faced the new nation broadly independent india faced three kinds of challenges the first and the immediate challenge was to shape a nation that was united yet accommodative of the diversity in our society india was a land of continental size and diversity its people spoke different languages and followed different cultures and religions at that time it was widely believed that a country full of such kinds of diversity could not remain together for long the partition of the country appeared to prove everyone's worst fears there were serious questions about the future of india would india survive as a uni- unified country would it do so by emphasizing national unity at the cost of every other objective would it mean rejecting all regional and subnational identities and there was an urgent question how was integration of the territory of india to be achieved the second challenge was to establish democracy you have already studied the indian constitution you know that the constitution granted fundamental rights and extended the right to vote to every citizen india developed representative democracy 
based on the parliamentary form of government. These features ensure that the political competition would take place in a democratic framework. A democratic constitution is necessary but not sufficient for establishing a democracy. It, the challenge was to develop democratic practices in accordance with the constitution. The third challenge was to ensure the development and well-being of the entire society and not only of some sections. Here again, the constitution clearly laid down the principle of equality and special protection to socially disadvantaged groups and religious and cultural communities. The Constitution also set out in the directive principles of state policy the welfare goals that democratic politics must achieve. The real challenge now was to evolve effective policies for economic development and eradication of poverty. How did independent India respond to these challenges? To what extent did India succeed in achieving the various objectives set out by the Constitution? This entire book is an attempt to respond to these questions. The book tells the story of politics in India since independence so as to equip you to develop your own answers to big questions like these. In the first three chapters, we look at how the three challenges mentioned above were faced in the early years after independence. In this chapter, we focus on the first challenge of nation building that occupied center stage in the years immediately after independence. We begin by looking at the events that formed the context of independence. This can help us understand why the issue of national unity and security became a primary challenge at the time of independence. We shall then see how India chose to shape itself into a nation united by a shared history and common destiny. This unity had to reflect the aspirations of people across the different religions and deal with the disparities that existed among regions and different sections of people. In the next two chapters, we shall turn to the challenge of establishing a democracy and achieving economic development with equality and justice. On 14th, 15th, August 1947, not one but two nations, two states came into existence, India and Pakistan. This was a result of partition, the division of British India into India and Pakistan. A drawing, the drawing of the border demarcating the territory of each country marked the culmination of political developments that you have read about in the history textbooks. According to the two-nation theory, 
advanced by the Muslim League, India consisted of not one but two people, Hindus and Muslims. That is why it demanded Pakistan, a separate country for the Muslims. The Congress opposed this theory and the demand for Pakistan, but several political developments in 1940s, the political competition between the Congress and the Muslim League and the British role led to the decision of the creation of Pakistan. Stop.